business stars. How do you use your personal brand to educate your customers and get them to choose you over everyone else in your industry? Entrepreneur and investor Jazz Takar knows this answer, and it has kept his real estate team among the top 10 in Canada for the last 10 years and running. They've sold over $2 billion with a B in real estate and still going strong. He wanted to share this knowledge, so he wrote a book titled Real Estate Intelligence. He also founded his own media company called From the Ground Up Media, where he helps other agents produce quality content. Today, we're going to learn how his personal brand played a part in his success. And now we'd like to welcome Jazz Takar to Be Bold Branding. Welcome, sir. I, Welcome. I, I really appreciate it, guys. I'm very excited to do this. And kudos to you as a fellow content creator. I know how tough it is to um, not only like book guests and then as guests uh, uh, reschedule at times and then to get the content out there, but to actually just put yourselves out there and then do it with the big smiles that I see on my screen right now. Your listeners, obviously, anyone who's driving or taking their dog for a walk can't see it, but I can not only see it, I can actually feel it. And so congratulations and kudos to you guys for putting yourselves out there because you're really spreading the virus that I like, which is positivity. And uh, we need a lot more of that that right now agree thank you so much Takeaway number one listeners yep that's really what we're all about you know we we talk a lot about uh unveiling your inner star so when you talk about positivity you know we encourage people to put themselves out there by putting that best face forward and actually that's what we want to talk about with you today awesome yeah. i'm looking forward to it let's do it all right, we're going to dig a little into the past. Uh, from my research, your first job was selling newspapers. How did that propel you, pr prepare you for what you do now? Yeah, look, I mean, I think uh, uh, the newspaper story for me was was really important because it was the first time that I got paid for for doing something that I naturally was good at and, and I actually enjoyed. Right, I think really where it started this 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 venture into meeting people and selling something and, and, and building rapport with people probably happened at the age of six or seven. When, when the teacher asks who, who, who could help with the book fair or, or, or sell, sell, you know, uh, go door to door and, and, and sell Christmas ornaments. I was the first kid to put up his hand. I'm sure a lot of it had to do with the fact now looking back that I just want to get out of class. Like I didn't learn in that <laughs> setting. Um, but, but at 12, when I actually got paid for it and and that would have been probably taking me back to exactly 1992 and so making I don't know it was probably like 30 bucks a week I thought I was going to sell newspapers for the rest of my life like I thought I hit the jackpot right like it was so cool to to do something that I actually enjoyed um which didn't feel like a lot of work for me. Um, and so I think that's a massive takeaway for, for the people who are watching and listening right now that, that when you can, when you can go all in on your hobby, I think you figured it out because it's going to be hard for people to compete against you when, when you're the one who's waking up really early in the morning and, and, and you're not going to have a hard time staying up at night, working on that skill, working on that craft, because it doesn't feel like work to you. It's more like a hobby. Right. And so for me, once I started to get that taste, I did that for mm, probably about two, two and a half years. Um, and then I kind of went on to my next venture, which, which was selling shoes in a retail setting at the age of about 15, uh, 16, like through a co-op program in school. And, and that was different because that that was the first time like adults were coming to me to the store and and I, I wasn't helping people with like the Al Bundy type of shoes and some of your listeners and viewers will get that reference it was actually I, I it, you got it you got it I know you did um, um, it was actually helping like sprinters and marathon runners so the importance of product knowledge and, and 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 understanding why a certain pair of Nikes might be better than a pair of Asics or a pair of New Balance like that kind of product knowledge has still stuck with me even 15, 20, 16 years later while I, while I do real estate now, um, understanding that you really need to know your product 
very, very well, like better than your client does. And it's a lot easier in 2022 for the client to know more than you because of the, the World Wide Web that you as a salesperson, you as a business owner, better know more than the customer does, because if not, they're not going to take you as serious. Mm -hmm. Very true. We have some, we have a little in common here, Jazz. Well, sort of. I sold vacuum cleaners door to door my first three years out of school. And I still remember how to sell those vacuum cleaners. <laughs> but more importantly, the lessons that came with uh, with selling those. Because as as we tell all of our clients, you know, sales is a never ending thing. If somebody says, I don't want to be a salesperson, it's like nonsense. You already are. You're selling yourself every single day. And that's what your brand is designed to do mm -hmm. I, I, like i mean if I, I i'm sure we could do a 45 minute podcast of all the the one or two like just even the one or two things that you would be able to elaborate on that when you knocked on doors selling vacuums how much you still use that to this day right like the fact mm -hmm. that i'm sure as you were walking up to someone's house you did a quick glance to how their their curb appeal was or what type of car they had? How did they landscape their properties? Did they have a dog or not? Whatever you can pull on to build rapport just before they knocked on that, before you knocked on the, on the door and before they answered it, you were going to use that, right? And so that skill set, I mean, the amount of times before somebody meets with me to talk about real estate, I'm um, in that first 56 seconds trying to figure out, like, did they say something? Are they wearing something? Do they, do they you know, uh, um, smell a certain way that I can just grab onto and actually talk about, which will possibly bring us closer? Because, look, I mean, as a salesperson, the less you actually talk about your product or service, the more effective you're going to be in the sale. Because if you're speaking about your love of surfing and food and fashion, and it's going to be a lot easier for that person to connect with you. And that's all about personal branding. And we're going to talk about ways that you can do that. But the more that you do talk about surfing, your, 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 your love for food and, pa and fashion, the, the sale of your product or sale, and, and for your listeners, I'm, I'm doing air quotes because that's what it is. It's just, it's just like the sale of your product or service is going to be an afterthought. It's just going to be a byproduct, I should a say, byproduct. of yeah. the relationship, Absolutely. the relationship that you're actually building. That that is why that is exactly why, and I want to take just a moment to to Taking really my mouth. to really drive this home for our listeners because we talk about this all the time. When you develop your personal brand the correct way, then when you meet with the client, the client should never be a cold call. You should never go into a meeting right. where the client is not already familiar with you and what you stand for. So you can spend that time with them dealing with what they need, not selling yourself. So that's, or, a, that's a huge deal. Right. Or vice versa. Like, I mean, how easy is it now to, 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 to find out a little something of the client that, and the prospect that you're about to meet? Absolutely. Check out their Twitter, go check out their LinkedIn, go check out their Facebook. Like if they put a picture up of, the, the Raptors game yesterday. Well, chances are they have a little love or an affinity to bat for basketball and or the Raptors. And then maybe you can just find out, even if you're not a Raptors fan, maybe you could just find out if they won or lost. You know, and maybe look at the 37 second highlights on Sports Center and see what happened in the game. And that's something that you might be able to talk about, right? Um, in terms of what you said about, about the client knowing about you, I mean, that's all that I personally now focus. I'm going to say about 80, 90% of my efforts. So about four years ago, I started this journey on content creation for one reason and one reason only to control the narrative of the messaging that was going to be happening mm -hmm. to my client base. I was going going to be the one on video. I started with an audio podcast, but transitioned into video quite quickly because I understood the importance of repurposing the content. But I, I also understood that, that people can connect with me a lot deeper through video. Um, that if you're not creating content on video right now as a business owner and salesperson, you're like missing out on the best and most effective way to do more sales, period. Like I can't oh, no. sugarcoat yeah. Yeah. that anymore. Nope. I like I used to be in, in, in some of these podcasts and, and, and videos and webinars to, 
to, to salespeople. I used to say, guys, this is a great idea. The clients are going to be able to connect. Now, like I got it. As a salesperson and business owner, if you're not creating video content, you are leaving possibly millions upon millions of dollars on the table because you're you're fighting uphill and 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 you're act you you're creating a lot of friction where you don't have to just by creating some videos that are evergreen that people your prospects can look at at two o'clock in the morning in their pajamas and make an actual quality informed decision if they actually want to work with you or not Agreed. A hundred percent. You know, that that is the very core of what we teach in Brand Face about personal branding and how important that content creation is. And people panic about that. They panic on that content creation because they think they got to look. We teach them to tell your story, the very things that you're talking about, why you ended up doing the things that you do and why that's invaluable to the people that you're going to sell a service to. Right. Because there I promise you, like just your good advice about you going and looking at some of their social media these days, that's what they're doing for you. If you get that appointment, if you're talking to them, they're right. checking you out and they want to know what it is about this person that they that they will connect with. Uh, your personal story is a great way for that content. And, and, look, uh, and, and, and you might not even speak about the fact that the Raptors won or lost, but be, but be, but on, if your prospect on all their platforms, the Facebooks, the links in the Twitters and everything. If, if, if they mention something about the Raptors, right now, you know, they really love them. It's not just a thought process. Like it wasn't just, oh, I watched the game. What if you put a note somewhere in your CRM that Joe Blow and Mary Jane love the Raptors? And then when they use your product or service, you send them a jersey for $67. $120 jersey, let's just say, okay? You send them a jersey on, on, on the congratulations of them closing on a property. Do you know how long that's going to go? Like how far that's going right. to go in Absolutely. possibly connecting with them? There's the branding and all the stuff that I think that is very important to all three of us. But then there's also just the, 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 some basic customer service skills that you can make use of as well. Well, for that's sure. That's personal. the personal part. <laughs> right. No doubt. Like no doubt. And I know this is a little bit of even off script, but I got to say it for those people out there. You know, there's a huge difference in customer acquisition and what that costs as business owners and, and customer retention. And the, what you're talking about there is absolute customer retention. And it costs very little compared to what it costs to actually acquire uh, a, a person to come into your organization for the first time and start Look. to build that trust. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm I'm of East Indian descent. And so like my, my, my mother negotiates over apples back home and I'm born in the northern part of an area called Rexdale in Toronto. And so you got to kind of figure out a way to to not spend as much money as everyone else is. That's kind of your competitive advantage. And I can tell you in the 27 years that I've been doing is doing sales, all my time and effort other than content creation right now is spent on customer retention because I know it's going to cost me a lot less, a lot less when it comes to getting the client, not only for the customer to do business with me over and over again, but I'm talking about the fact that I know that Mary Jane hangs out with other Mary Jane and Joe Blows hang out with other Joe Blows. And if I liked working with Joe Blow and vice versa, well, chances are I'm going to like working with their closest 5, 10, 15 people as well, right? And so it's a lot easier to, to use that word of mouth. Now, on, in, in, in 2022, the word of mouth is Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and right. TikTok. That's the only difference, right? Back when we started yep. 25 years ago and 20, 15 years ago, it was somebody picking up the phone and saying, Hey, Joe Blow, you should go to this restaurant or use this real estate agent. And so um, I look, I love, you know, the CAC talk, the customer acquisition costs and all that kind of stuff. But but for me, it's all about how can we get creative and find ways that our, our current clients, our current customer base actually introduces us to more people. Because as to a real estate people. agent, right? Yeah, like as a real estate agent, chances are the average person is only going to make a move anywhere from about six to seven, every six to seven years. It's probably trending even higher than that now, but let's call it six to seven years that you can't wait for that client to keep, to, to, to buy. <laughs> a second time around you're going to be out of business the lights are going to turn off right so 
if you can get creative in, in providing exceptional service to your current clients and consistently asking your current clients, as well as giving them tools to introduce you with other people and tools being video, podcasting, images on Instagram, infographs yes. on Instagram, 140 little uh, character tweets. Those are all tools for them to share to their database and their friends and family. Yep. No mm -hmm. doubt. And you know, we'll, in our program, we call that seeking your ideal customer. And we mm. teach our people, you have to know that ideal customer exactly. inside and out for those reasons, not just for that one person. Like you said, I'm in the real estate business too. We can't wait five to eight years for somebody to say, hey, I'm ready to resell and buy something else. You need their neighbors, their friends, their tennis partners, their uh, people they buy cars from, like everybody they hang out with is most likely pretty close to that same ideal customer. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're speaking I, I, I mean, I, I, yes. I, I mean, I mean, I think that's why all three of us are kind of cut from the same cloth and you feel the, syner the, the, the synergy between us because, I mean, we, we understood a long time ago, right? Like it's a lot easier to, to have that same client do business with you. I mean, you mentioned like who they're buying cars from and all that. I mean, I, I take it one step further as well that, that I, become, I try to become the, the, the hub to the, all those spokes, which is the car salesman, the electrician, like not only the real estate lawyers and the mortgage brokers, but the, the, the florist in the area, the dentist in the area, the doctor in the area where Absolutely. I'm going to go give all these people business because I know if I buy someone seven coffees, chances are if they're a regular human being, the eighth time around, they're going to want to buy me a coffee. And in business, if you give five, seven leads to somebody or introductions, chances are they're going to do the same to you uh, for you as well. I love it. Yeah, I do too. I gotta ask. Let, let's let's spin this back a little bit uh, personal. Like, would you say that? Uh, let, well, like, let me ask you this: What do you think it is about you that gets people to trust the information they're get that you're giving them? You think that there's a, a thing well, look. I think first and for, foremost, it's it's the fact that I'm very good looking. Right. Um, yeah. And well, so I can use it now. Look, I think, I think, I think um, I, 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 when I started creating content four years ago, I started and I, I told people right off the bat that A, I don't have a formal education. I cannot spell half the words I say. Um, um, I, I'm born in an, in the northern part of Toronto in an area called Rexel, as I mentioned earlier. So I put that all up front. I, I told everything, like I told everyone everything about me up front and that if you were going to continue, like continue to, to watch my content, listen to my podcast, read my book or whatever it is, that I wanted you to know all this stuff up front because those negative what like oh, like the, the 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 stuff that have the the negative connotations to it are going to come out at some point in our relationship, Mister and Missus Prospect. So you might as well know about it up front. In fact, there's there's words that I use out of context that, that I don't even like. I sometimes I, I I don't mean to say them, and I do. Like I want people to know that all up front. So to answer your question, I think what has kept me around and and what has kept me very effective with my branding is that i don't script anything you get me at the rawest form mm -hmm. i have no scripts i've never written down a script because the truth is is i can't read and talk at the same time i have a tough time doing that so <laughs> i'm just better off raw i'm going to give it to you in the first 50 side you know in in, in a one minute short form piece of content and i'm just going to allow people to the ones to, that are attracted to me in terms of what I'm saying to come into my world and the ones that are just like, this guy's on crack. I hate the fact that he moves his hands and he makes jokes that he's good looking. Like, I don't like that. Great, because I think the, the, the objective of marketing, and, and, and I think that's what personal branding is, is, is you want to attract the right people and repel the wrong ones. Yeah, because yeah. there's only so much time that we all have that when someone walks into this office moving forward, they've already seen a video of mine. They've heard a podcast of mine and they've said, 
okay, there's something to him. I want to get to know a little bit more. And the ones that don't come here, awesome. Not wasting their time. They're not wasting my time. So that's my long-winded answer to your question that I think I just like, you know, what you see is what you get with me. In fact, I actually think I put it out there so much all the negatives about me, like the fact that I have very sweaty hands. This is my, I think there's about 14,000 hours, 14,000 hours of video in the last four years of mine that we've recorded. So I'm very comfortable in this setting. I'm sure your viewers and listeners can tell. I like the sound of my own voice sometimes, but like my hands are sweaty. They, that's just what happens. I like it's always, I've been like that since I've been a kid, right? And so I just tell everybody everything up front. This way they can make their own informed quality decision if if i'm worth their time to come meet i think i've been very blessed that i connect with a lot of people and so that's what's kind of given me my competitive edge yeah okay yeah. well let's stop right there for a second guys because this is another teachable moment what he's talking about is authenticity mm -hmm. okay it's what's what brand face stands for authenticity you've got to be yourself because otherwise it's too hard to keep up with somebody else yeah, it's right? way too hard to be yeah, somebody else exactly <laughs> and the other thing he's talking about is allowing your brand to precede you so if you have the brand defined developed and displayed correctly mm -hmm. and consistently as we talk about then that brand is going to be out there ahead of you when he says people have already seen my videos they've seen me on social media they've kind of they already know who i am before before I come into the room, that's the objective. And we've just got to make sure that that brand is dialed in. So what you want them to see and hear is out there. And that doesn't mean we manufacture something. It means we are just who we are and we give the best information and educate people in the best way that we know how with our own unique and authentic personalities. So uh, soapbox over, but I just wanted I just wanted to bring that to your attention because authenticity is very important. Well, and here and here's a man that knows this and living it, and you know, and has been a top ten percent on teams for the past ten years, right? So this is living proof that this works, which is incredible, right? What What do you say? Um, uh, well, how about this question? What do you wish that you knew before you started your career in real estate? Is there, or let's just say, sales. like from a, like, like, well, like from a sales perspective, I mm -hmm. mean, I think I would have just told myself to think bigger. Um, and that's really like from a sales and a business perspective, I think, excuse me, I wish, I wish I didn't, I wasn't as fearful at the start. Um, and I just, because like the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, um, doesn't know the difference from something that's small or something that's big, right? And so I wish I just had thought bigger. From a content creation and personal brand perspective, and I know there's a lot of, because I have a, I have a media company that helps real estate agents here in Canada produce content. So I'm now watching this on scale, what, what, is, what is really slowing down a lot of people. And at the start, it did for me as well. And I wish I, wish I kind of got over it um, even quicker, which was that like, Nobody really cares that much about me other than like the closest people in my life. And there's probably 18 of them, my mother and my father, my wife, my, my brothers, and then this work family that I have, you know what I mean? Other mm -hmm. than that, like, I think I, ha I, I had a lack of humility to think that people were actually watching me or caring about me as much as they were. Because we all know that we don't think about other people that much. Like, I'm not the main character in your story and vice versa. I'm the right. main character in my own life and my own sure. story. And so at the start, I wish I was able to get over that a lot quicker. Because if I was, I would have created content a lot quicker and a right. lot that like I would have done it a lot faster right and so um, I'm watching now at scale some of the clients that we're bringing on their their lack I mean I have no better way of saying it or no other way of saying it it's their lack of humility to think that people are actually thinking about you a lot because they're just not like we, we right. you know I don't have my phone on me but like um you scroll through Instagram or TikTok and you might see a picture of somebody and say oh I don't really like that or oh my god what were they thinking wearing that or whatever it might be or look at his hair or look at her her her, her lack of makeup or whatever it is but then you move on and right. 
then Saturday happens. You know what I mean? And like, right. and so um, I just think, I just think I wish, I wish I was able to get over. I wish I got over that a lot quicker. Um, I'm glad I'm there now because I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I, I know that there's a select few uh, uh, people, as I mentioned, that 18, 20 people that I know um, I'm in their thoughts on a regular basis and they're not judging me anyways. And so the others, I just know that eh, I come into their thoughts and then, and then life goes on. I, well, I actually love that point also. I mean, uh, because it, it, it dawned on me at a certain time after going through the branding program of Tanya's uh, that, that anything that I had accomplished in life, really only the only reason that was important to my next client was that experience level, right? What, what that's still how I was going to be able to help them from that. Uh, you know, I, I've been involved with 78,000 res, residential real estate transactions in the United States more than anybody. Uh, but that's not important to the guy I'm selling a house to, right? Except for how that experience level helps him with his house because right. he's interested in his house. He don't care how many I've done. Right. And it dawned on me. I'm like you, it dawned on me at some point. I'm like, you know, all the messaging needs to be uh, towards why that is important to them uh, because you're right. They're going to forget you after that, unless you do what so you're true. supposed to do with your brand and keep in front yeah. of them. Yeah. But so that's true. also a big part of the freedom of a brand is, oh, you know, is when you can let go of your insecurities, let go of what other people think, let go of the follower attitude, just let go because it just releases so much pressure and allows you to be yourself when you realize not everybody cares what you're up to. <laughs> yeah, I have I have agents tell me sometimes I'll be like, hey, you know, like this friend that went to high school used somebody else for to, to for the real estate transaction. I'm like, well, go get another friend. Like, you know, you know like, just, oh, <laughs> oh, like I got a team of 54 agents and hundreds upon thousands of salespeople that that mentioned that stuff to me. And, and, and for real estate, it's been 17 years. And I always say that, look, it was your fault at the end of the day. Like he says I mean, the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's your fault. Like you don't you got to show your value. Up. A hundred percent. You got to show All your value. Long. And if they choose long. somebody else, let them choose them. That might have been a better 100%. person for them. Or they exactly. learn a lesson and come back. I, I, yeah. Look, how do you know? And, and I don't mean to take this off on like, you know, to left field, but I mean, I'm all about gratefulness. How do you know you weren't going to drive to that house and something was going to happen? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many things, you know, oh, yes. like you can really, yes. you can really if pull you hang out, up right? on those things. You don't move to the next one. Like you've got to so like, true. You've got to keep going and just be the professional that you are. You're not going to, nobody gets a hundred percent sales ratio, not even Tanya. And she's good. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that vote of confidence, but no, I don't, I don't bat a thousand. I do not. Yeah. So. Hey, hey, we want to ask you five very important questions about your personal brand that you no doubt are really good at. And we're going to do it like a uh, Jay Leno style five, four, three, two, one. Um, so let's start with, a question number five, who do you serve? Who's your ideal customers? My ideal customers are, are anyone who's thinking about creating wealth in real estate. And I would say, um, looking back to the last 17 years, it's anyone really from the age group of about 35 to about 47, 48 um, here in the city of Toronto. Y'all hear how dialed, that in, uh, how dialed in that is? That's oh, perfect. yeah. That's great. That's, that's great. That's All right. perfect. Question number four, exactly how do you serve them? I lead with education. I teach people on how to buy, sell, and invest in real estate all by themselves without the help of a real estate agent, knowing that most people won't do things on their own, but I want everyone to know how to do it on their own because then they can make a quality informed decision themselves. Again, dialed in. Number three, what qualifies you to serve them? I've been doing this for 17 years. I have a team of 54 agents. We do a little over 700. Uh, uh, we help a little over 700 families buy, sell, and invest every single year. And first and foremost, I am a real estate investor. So anywhere I wouldn't put my money, I don't tell anyone else to do that. Question number two, how does it make their life better? Look, I think there's a lot 
of vehicles where you can create wealth, but real estate is one that is very scalable. It's something that can be done in a passive way. It also can be done in an active way, but something that can be done in a passive way. And you don't need a lot of credentials to invest into real estate. Just look at the guy on the screen. <laughs> I, number one, what sets you apart from others in your industry? I think the fact that I have a core group, I have the team of 54 agents that I mentioned, but I got five people with me, five to seven people with me on a regular basis that without them, um, you wouldn't have a jazz tacker that's sitting in front of you now in this capacity. These five to seven people are golden. We all have our strengths. We have massive weaknesses, but we decided to go all in on the strengths. And now when you get to, when you get to meet jazz tacker, you're getting a little piece of those five to seven people. So I'll say it's my team. Yeah. It's my core group of team that's around me. That is super jazz. And I, I, I parrot that myself. I know I, we could not do what we do without the incredible minds that are behind us uh, and helping us every day. So that's awesome. That's true. That's true. All right, Jazz, we're, we're winding down here. So we're going to ask you one last question. What is the one message you want to leave with our listeners today about your personal brand? I'm going to actually bring a like your viewers or your listeners are not going to be able to see it, but I just saw it actually behind me. It's this sign right here. Okay. Yep. It Love says, it. It says ready, fire, aim. And most people, <laughs> unfortunately, are raised to look before you leap or don't pull the trigger until you have the target all lined up. But I'm telling you with, with personal branding and content creation, Pull the trigger as much as you possibly can and then adjust along the way. Do not fall into paralysis by analysis. It is the poison of so many people that just sitting and doing nothing. I, I implore you to get started. You'll figure it out along the way. Great that, advice. It, it sure is great advice. Now, how can prospects reach you if they want to work with you? Or just, hey, just chat Look, with I you, mean, Jazz. I really appreciate that. I mean, I think just, you know, just having me on on your platform, I really appreciate it, guys. As I mentioned earlier, um, I'm not that hard to find. I, I, I produce anywhere from 10 to 15 pieces of content a day on all the platforms. Just Google my first name and my last name and you can design. You can decide if you want me in video format, audio format or written work. That's great. You All right. Now, listeners, think about what he just said right there. 10 to 15 pieces every day on exactly. all those platforms. Exactly. So, and it gives the, you an idea of what you should be doing. The most beautiful part of it is if your personal brand is dialed in, there will be no end to the content that you can create because you know the answers to those five questions Jazz just answered. Yep. So, Jazz, thank you so much for being on Be Bold Branding. We really enjoyed it, and we hope everybody gets a lot out of this. In fact, we know they will. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Absolutely. You bet. You bet. All right, guys, if you're ready to take your brand to the next level, Michael and I want to help you. Just head to discussyourbrand.com and uh, fill out a short form so we'll have a little more information about you and be better prepared to talk about your challenges, needs, and goals. We can help you get where jazz is. Absolutely. Hugely successful. All right. All you've got to do is take the first step, discussyourbrand.com. Hey, we bring value like this every week, guys. So tap the subscribe button. We'll wait on you right here while you do that. There you go. So you'll hear about all these things first. And listen, it's all about prosperity. Y'all know that because you follow us. Uh, when we talk about prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the full 360 of an abundant life. We truly wish for every one of y'all. We know that prosperity favors the bold. Jazz talked about it earlier. So be bold, be bold. folks, especially with your personal brand. And thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you, Mr. Jazz. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next time on Be Bold Branding.